Once you establish and define this, okay, these two just follow what we call them corollaries, um, results that are you know, proven on the basis of some other kind of thing that we've established. Okay? So we did other bases. We got to this, right? The derivative of a to the x for any real number a is a to the x log a. Fantastic. But now we're going to make a bit of a bigger leap over to logs, okay? And this will sort of unlock one of the mysteries we already developed earlier in the course, okay? Here's where I'm going to begin. By definition, again, I've got these two things. Now, what am I going to do with them and how am I going to get them to logs? Hmm. You can see y equals e to the x is actually a log statement in disguise. Agreed? Right. Any, every exponential statement is a log statement in disguise. How would I rewrite it if it were a log equation? Log dy. Okay, so I'm going to make x the subject, and you could put it either way. But that's going to be equal to log base e of y. So I'll write my tail Okay. So that's just that. Now, on the basis of this, like nothing has changed. This is still this situation. So I'm going to take this derivative, which I already know, and I'm going to turn it upside down. Not a major sort of thing to do. This is a fraction, dy over dx. It's y's over run. So now I'm just thinking about run over y's. No big deal. So it's 1 over e to the x. How are you feeling so far? Does it make sense? I haven't done anything you know, incredibly groundbreaking. Why is it? Why are you changing it? Why did you change it from exponential log? Then you need the bit. You'll see. Oh, <laughs> I am, what I'm doing, by the way, is I'm trying to get over into logarithms are the inverse operation of exponentials. They undo what exponentials do. Um, they swap inputs and outputs, right? So that's why I'm trying to get some swapping happening. Okay, now, one last little thing to say. E to the x, right? I actually know what e to the x is. And it's kind of weird to have this as a function of x, because now this on the left-hand side is differentiating with respect to y. Do you notice that? This is differentiate that with respect to y. So ordinarily, we would expect this to also be in terms of y. So dx on dy is in fact 1 over y. Do you agree with that? Because e to the x, the first thing I wrote is y equals e to the x. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. OK, now look at this. Do you remember all that work we did when we talked about dummy variables? We talked about dummy variables. Dummy variables it's like this x, y, u, t, theta, they're all just labels, right? They don't actually mean anything. I can swap them out however I like. Look at this line. Look at it really, really hard once I find my other problem. Watch what happens now if I take every single variable. I mean, there's only two. All the y's and all the x's and swap them around. That's all inverses are doing, right? They're just swapping inputs and outputs. So what I get over here is y equals log x. I swap the two variables. In the derivative, I should swap those variables too. That should be dy on dx. And the last one there on the right hand side, bam. That was not complicated at all. Why did I swap? Why did I swap? Because I really want everything in terms of x's, right? Like, I don't want x equals log y. We usually say y is the dependent variable and x is the independent one. This is the usual way that we phrase things, okay? So just to make it a little more obvious, we usually say y is a function of x. Now, this is what's brilliant about it, right? Do you remember when we were integrating and differentiating? We said this. Right? We said this, and there's an integral statement that goes with it, right? If you integrate this, what do you get? Do you remember? What do you get? You do the opposite thing, right? Instead of subtracting, you add, right? And instead of multiplying, you divide. And then, of course, you've got your handy little constant integration. Now, I said that that's true. It's true all the time. It's true for positive numbers, negative numbers. It's true for zero. It's true for fractions, even. Except not negative 1. And here is why, right? When you have x equals negative 1 over here, that is in fact 1 over x, right? The integral of x to the power of negative 1 of 1 over x is not any more polynomials like these things. It's something different altogether, 
right? It's not at all obvious that that's the case. We had to take this winding journey through exponentials and bases, and then we got to logs and added them. So, this, this here, and um, this here, the two things I've put in blue boxes, I'm pretty sure that's it. The two things I've put in blue boxes, they're kind of like your keys for this entire, all exponentials and logs. You shouldn't combine them with chain rule, you can combine them as products or as quotients, but you're going to be using basically those two guys. Okay? Um, this guy over here is kind of a bit of a footnote. He's less common, but he does come up sometimes. Okay? The lion's share of stuff is big. 